This is the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus, a Saturday matinee of NCAA women's basketball from the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah. It's Kansas at 7-6 and six in the Big 12, taking on the BYU Cougars at 5-8 and eight in those same Big 12 conference standings. Wherever and however you're connected, great to have you with us. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Kristen Kozlowski. Here are a couple of teams positioning for the quickly approaching conference tournament and both playing really well. The Jayhawks have won four of their last five. BYU is also on a three-game win streak. Well, these two teams met back in January 31st. It went in favor of Kansas, and the big reason why is because who they have inside. Tiana Jackson is a handful at six foot six. She has great length in there, uses her angles well, runs the floor like a gazelle, incredibly quick. And this is a player that was a handful against BYU. She put up 25 points, 22 rebounds, had five blocks in her best game of her career. She is leading the conference in blocks at just over three per game. She needs to come out and have another monster game. How about those numbers against BYU? 25 points, 22 rebounds. Lauren Gustin, a huge part of why BYU is now finding their stride. The queen of rebounding the NCAA has led BYU to not just three straight wins, but back-to-back -back road victories. Well, she's led the nation in rebounds per game for two straight seasons. She's consistent in there, great footwork, runs the floor well. She is a workhorse inside, 24 double-doubles on the season, earned her player of the week in the Big 12 for her performance last week where she put up 22 and 18 in their two wins over Baylor and Cincinnati. For more on this matchup today, we welcome the third member of our broadcast team today, Brett Hamm. This three-game win streak for BYU has really begun to set them apart in the conference. They're the only Big 12 newcomer with a three-game conference win streak and the only Big 12 newcomer with a ranked win this season. Kaylee Smiler was asked about this three-game win streak and what's different about it after the win against Kansas. And she said, we've just created a really good habit of coming into every game knowing we haven't earned anything. And every night, we have something to prove. Thank you, Brett. Those win streaks collide here today in Provo. Again, Kansas winners of four straight, five of their last six. BYU got the three-game win streak going, including a home win over then 18th-ranked Baylor to really jumpstart this BYU team. We are ready for tip-off. As a couple of teams mired in the middle of the pack in the Big 12, again, trying to make things a little bit easier for their teams when they get to Kansas City and the approaching Big 12 Conference Tournament. But just five games remaining in Big 12 play. Both of these teams have three of the five on the road. It is so tough to win on the road. That's why it's important to take care of home business. For BYU, this would be a massive win to continue that streak. These teams have only met one time before that happening in Lawrence and a win by the Jayhawks, led by Tiana Jackson, and the Jayhawks control the tip. In that meeting, a big emphasis was on rebounding, and Kansas held a huge lead over that as you see her go right to work inside. So for Coach Whiting of BYU, she has really hammered home to her team that we have got to box out, especially on the offensive glass, and limit them to just one opportunity. First offensive possession for BYU after Jackson scores the opening two for the Jayhawks. It is Gustin. Pass was tipped. Last touch by Gustin and BYU and a quick turnover by the Cougars. Back over to the Jayhawks. Kansas picked to finish fourth in the preseason Big 12 coaches poll. BYU picked 11th. Franklin off the glass and good with the left hand right at Amari Whiting and a nice start for Kansas. So we see both teams come out defensively and they're primarily man-to-man -man defense and Kansas is so good at getting the ball in the paint, whether it's an entry pass to Jackson, which we saw, or off the dribble drive as they attack and penetrate. Zakaya Franklin off that dribble drive. Lauren Gustin with a long two, not necessarily the forte of her game, but a good sign nonetheless for BYU when Gustin can extend her range. And that is the shot that every opponent is giving her to, to take those long twos, which she did not knock down against Kansas. She was 5 for 22 from the floor. So a great sign that she got the first one to go in. Kansas now 3 for 3 to open the game. As Mayberry gets down the lane and scores another senior, more experience for the Jayhawks, who leads 6-2. to two. We have multiple super seniors, five players on this team that have scored over 1,000 career points. A lot of balance on the offensive side of the ball. And Whiting is called for a travel inside, trying to kick it back out to Rose Bubakar. And there are two BYU turnovers here 
in the first minute 47 of this game. And there's no secret that turnovers have plagued this team as you take a look at the head coach for Kansas. Brandon Schneider in his ninth season, a terrific coach, not only in his ninth season, but overall his 26, where he just, he won an a NCAA Division II national tie in 2010. And Kansas with their first turnover, their first unsuccessful trip down the floor. Amber Whiting in her second season with the Cougars, 31 and 28, and three wins over 500. Thanks to the three game win streak, BYU is currently riding into their home contest today. Whiting near midcourt. Finds an outlet there in Gustin. We'll take another jumper and got the friendly bounce. Nestled it up against the attachment there on the back of the iron and it rolled down 6-4, Kansas with a two point lead. Again, that's the shot that Jackson's gonna give her. She's just gonna bait her and stay off her in the paint, which is exactly what they did back in Lawrence. And Gustin is paying it off in her first two attempts. Double goes to Jackson, good ball movement. And the three is missed. Battle for the rebound, Whiting secures. Nichols unable to connect from distance. Gustin did a really good job that time of putting a body on Jackson. because You cannot jump with her 6'6 frame. Smiler straight away three, no good. Gustin locked up with Nichols. We had Gustin grabbed around the arm, and that will go as a loose ball foul on Nichols. You see some early subs coming in for this Kansas team, and trying to make sure that he keeps some of these players fresh legs, has energy, high intensity play from his players at all times. Samaya so Nichols will take a seat after that foul. Woolston on the BYU inbound. In the corner, has the ball poked away. And some quick hands by Holly Kerskeeter. And Kerskeeter did not play in that matchup back on January 31st. She rolled her ankle. She was injured out for that game. And she's their three-point specialist, but also really good perimeter defender. And challenge with guarding Woolston. Woolston had a career high 26 points in that meeting. Something that Coach Schneider does not want to see again here today. Throws Bubakar down the lane. Ryan Cobbins just straight up slipped and fell, leaving Bubakar wide open, but she's unable to connect on the layup. Score remains 6-4. Kansas connected on their first three field goals. Mayberry, baseline, got around the BYU defense and found the angle. Well, so far, the Jayhawks are doing an excellent job in their dribble drive attack penetration. They're very patient. You can see the little jab step, and then as she got the defense to jump, she took her all the way to the hoop on that driving lane. Dustin off the glass a little bit too strong. Kerskeeter. Had her foot hit the baseline, and it will stay with BYU. BYU is doing a really good job in being decisive when they take shots, and that's so important for this team. It's a fairly young team with just the two seniors in Smiler and Gustin, but they have to be able to be decisive, and when they're open, take shots confidently. Lauren Davenport there, Gustin with the defender on her back and doesn't get the friendly roll. Papa Dapulu defending for the Jayhawks, and so Gustin with two good looks, but unable to connect on either. Collapsing defense. And BYU with the defensive rebound back the other direction. Whiting off the bounce. Tough shot. And Conessa. His whistle for the foul as Amari Whiting draws two free throws. And Whiting with a beautiful drive from that left wing all the way to the right side, trying to finish on that right side of the rim and going right at Cronesso, comes in off the bench, doesn't play a lot of minutes. And she's actually really good friends, close friends with Marina Mata on BYU's roster. Both of them played growing up together in the circuits. First free throw is well short from Whiting. She'll have one more. 5.35 to play in the opening frame. It's Kansas with an 8-4 lead on BYU. Whiting second is long. And a lane violation on Kansas. You don't see that very often. And Papadopoulou looked right over at head coach Brandon Schneider. And he was not happy. Those are mistakes you cannot afford to have on the road. Whiting... 
will try and make the Jayhawks pay with an additional free throw attempt, and she can't do it. So no harm, no foul there, quite literally, even with an extra free throw on the lane violation, Whiting misses three straight. Mayberry has her shot blocked by Kaylee Smiler. Whiting in transition. Davenport in the corner, cut off, back to Whiting. We'll flip it to Gustin, good position, and Gustin scores. With Ryan Cobbins on her back, it's 8-6, Jayhawks in front. Beautiful job from the true freshman, Whiting, as she didn't, she kept her head up, but she located Gustin and didn't force a shot, but when she saw she was open on the seal, just a quick pass inside. Mayberry around the screen from Papadopoulou. Pass is tipped. Cobbins. Shot may have been partially blocked by Gustin. Ball is loose. Gustin collects and now has Whiting across the timeline. Crossover dribble. Smiler on the wing. They want Calvert inside. Calvert turning and her left-handed layup is an air ball. And Papadopoulou with a solid defensive effort there. Lauren Gustin, by the way, number five all time in NCAA rebound history with 1,591, broke into the top five just a few minutes ago. Yeah, picked up her second rebound in this game and coming in had 1,589. Just incredible what she's been able to do in her career at BYU at six foot one, an undersized center inside. Calvert misfires on a three, so the Jayhawks with the ball and an early two-point lead. He pokes it away from Mayberry into the hands of Cobbins. Now Mayberry again isolated on Gus, or rather on Whiting. Overshoots the hoop, wanted a foul call. Whistles remain quiet. Davenport and BYU have numbers. Smiler, corner three, that's long. Offensive rebound, Calvert. She lost it, almost tried to roll it out to one of her teammates. Now the Jayhawks in transition. Well, the pace has really picked up between these two teams, and this will bode in favor of BYU. As I can see, even Mayberry, number zero out there, she's a little gassed. But a good finish in transition by Kansas to give themselves a four-point lead. Zakaya Franklin again with that left hand, and again off glass, she's got four points. Four-point lead for the Jayhawks at 10-6. 3.08 to play in the first quarter. Smiler cutting back door, good bounce pass. Gustin finishes once again. Lauren Gustin with all eight of BYU's points. She has been very active here in the first quarter. Three rebounds as well. And a heads up play from Smiler. Smiler's averaging close to six assists per game in the last four games. Just incredible what she's doing in getting the ball to her teammate in a scoring position. Widen called for the hang check. You gotta appreciate the handles that both Mayberry and Zakiya Franklin have, causing BYU some issues early. The Jayhawks lead by two at 10-8 in Pro Bowl. Hey, bro, did you see this? Yo, what's the best thing about BYU? The Cougar Tell. <clears throat> Duh, the acronym. The Mar. Rough. <laughs> Yo, it's gotta be the Creamery. I love the BYU debit card from Mountain America. You would say that, you're in the commercial. Get your BYU debit card with my style checking, only at Mountain America. Jax, are you gonna eat all that? Maybe. You're sick, bro. <laughs> Accidents don't just happen nine to five, they happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven, nights, weekends, every day, every hour, really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always, and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Yesterday, my heart and 
BYU was a place I wanted to be because I knew it would help me progress as a person and not just a player. It gave him something to play for, a higher purpose, a bigger meaning. For him to look on a brighter side of things, that's why he's someone everyone should cheer for. Belief is everything, and I think that's what I had when I came here. I truly believe that there is good things to find in whatever situation we're in. Welcome back to this Saturday showdown of Big 12 Women's Basketball on ESPN Plus. Kansas up 10-8 on BYU. And again, this was the meeting that started Kansas's current four-game win streak. Kaylee Wilson knocking down a three, but Tiana Jackson and company were too much on their home floor, Christy. Yeah, it really played in favor of points in the paint. They were plus 16. They did a really good job getting the free throw line. 22 of 30 at the free throw line. Perfect free throws in this game. And they held Gustin to just 10 of t 10 rebounds, 10 points. But Kaylee Wilson coming off that career high, 26 points in that game. And that is a point of emphasis for head coach Brandon Schneider to make sure she does not get open. Looks like she did in Lawrence. Now, Wilson has been quiet in the first quarter. Lauren Gustin very much has not been quiet. She's got all eight of BYU's points and three rebounds. They want Jackson in the post. Has it poked away of the collapsing defense and quick hands of Kaylee Smiler. Here is the aforementioned Kaylee Woolston. Calvert needs to stay in the game and stay out of foul trouble so that they can utilize her bigger, stronger frame against Jackson and give her a different look. Calvert sets the screen for Smiler. To Davenport. She'll flip it to Woolston and... Well, there was one official, Tiffany Bird, that was going to call a foul, but I believe they called three seconds in the key. Oh, no, they... And indeed, it is a three seconds call. I thought it was gonna be maybe an illegal screen set by Lauren Davenport, yeah. but three seconds was called before that collision happened on the perimeter. So for BYU, that is their fourth turnover. And points off turnover were a big factor in the last game as well, where Kansas was able to convert off of those turnovers 20 points. Nichols. And she's bumped and fouled on her way to the hoop. Well, Nichols is a phenomenal freshman. There are so many talented freshmen in the Big 12. You're also seeing two true freshmen that lead the backcourt for BYU in this game as well. But Nichols comes in, six foot freshman, leads this team in scoring at 14 and a half points per game, number 12 out there for Kansas. And Coach Snyder was telling me that he offered her when she was in the eighth grade. Might as well start early in the recruiting game. Nowadays, right? Starting yeah. to hear more and more of this. An offensive foul is whistled on Ryan Cobbins for the illegal pick. And the turnover by the Jayhawks gives BYU the basketball back. The Cougars a chance to tie or take the lead with a three here late in the first quarter. Gustin will try that three and knock it down. Lauren Gustin, 11, Kansas, 10. How about Lauren Gustin with her first three-point make of the season? She was zero for eight before that one goes down. Cobbins in and out on the three, and a foul is called underneath. That'll be on Tyana Jackson. Well, Gustin has come in with a different mentality, knowing that Kansas is going to sag off and bait her to hit shots, and she has knocked down some long twos and a big three-point shot. That's going to build confidence in the senior. Five of seven shooting for BYU's star power forward. Gustin and Jackson have been jawing at each other as this game has gone oh, it's on. it's such a fun matchup to watch these two. A, a difference in five inches, though, but Gustin will not back down. And Gustin makes a play right there, tips out the rebound, but is secured by Woolston after the miss. Gustin thought for a moment again about another long shot. Instead, it's Calvert who goes back rim and no good.
The scoring drought of about three minutes now for Kansas. BYU's done a really good job there. Help side defense, forcing him to take tough shots. Skip pass for an open three is good. Zakaya Franklin. Franklin comes Three in. of three now shooting seven points. And she averages about 11 points per game, 31% from distance. She's one of those players on this roster that has scored over 1,000 career points. She's played in the most games in her career all time at Kansas, about 146. Coming in 146 to be exact. Shot clock is off, first quarter clock winding down. Davenport forces it up at the buzzer and it's no good. And Kansas will take a two point lead into the second quarter. They lead 13-11. What a great matchup inside. Tiana Jackson and Lauren Gustin. Gustin with all 11 of BYU's points. But she and the Cougars trail the visiting Jayhawks by two after 10 minutes. We'll be back with more on the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Every minute count. Kia, movement that inspires. People want to define Gen Z, but that's our job. I wait tables, but last week I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives and led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. At Papa John's, we start with better. Like our fresh, never frozen dough made from six simple ingredients. And our dough can save you dough. Get two or more Papa Pairing's favorites for just $6.99 each. Order now on the app from Papa John's. The rush to the playoffs. No, no, no. The biggest games. The biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Kansas Jayhawks lead BYU 13-11 after the first quarter. This is the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus alongside Kristen Kozlowski. I'm Spencer Linton, and how about this stat? The BYU Cougars in Big 12 play this season 1-8 and eight when trailing after the first quarter. You want to talk about how important a good start is for this BYU team specifically? It has mattered a lot, and... Wouldn't you know, the one win that BYU has when they trailed after the first quarter happened to be the last game they played at UCF. Before that, it was 0 for 8. Now, and Kansas, of course, with the lead after the now, first quarter. What, what stat in there has ever been done where Lauren Gustin has scored all the points in the first quarter? <laughs> so it's a good sign, I think, for BYU. Based off that stat, aside from that, is that nobody else in the quarter scored but Gustin. So if they can manage to get some of these other players to get going, the two true freshmen in Whiting and Woolston, the two other players that average double figure did not score. Whiting didn't even take a shot. Wilson 0 for 1 in that quarter. But Gustin came ready to play. She was 5 for 7. She had all of 
11 points for BYU and Kansas 13 points with that two point lead holding on for the up first frame. Gustin with her first three pointer of the season. Why not? It was that type of first quarter. Woolston. Get to Whiting straight away. Shot clock winding down. Whiting has her shot swatted away by Jackson. There's Access denied. Rim protection that is so important to what they do defensively because ja Jackson is that anchor in there. Fourth in the country in blocks per game. Well, physical play at the hoop. Good move initially by Nichols on the head and shoulder pick to get around Whiting, but then some a couple of places I, I saw where maybe an offensive foul could have been called, and then a defensive foul as you look back at Jackson's big block shot right here. Well, and as you watch, she came all the way from the right wing helping well way out. She had to extend and help. Then she got inside, made sure Gustin didn't get a seal, and then scrambled off of her, got off her body to get to the ball. That's that lateral quickness we were talking about, and she moved so well at six foot six. Wollston off the screen of Gustin, picked up by Jackson, nothing there, back out to Smiley. The Jayhawks really making BYU work on offense. That last foul was picked up by Samaya Nichols. That was her second, the freshman who leads this team in scoring, now on the bench. A handoff to Rose Bubakar with the shot clock winding down once again, and she split the defense for a wide open layup at the hoop. We're tied at 13. Bubakar is so athletic and she has the advantage in most matchups off the dribble. Mayberry, we just got such great poise when she has the ball in her hands. Defense faded away and left her open for a wide open little floater there from about six feet. Not surprisingly, she pays it off. She comes from a basketball family. Her dad, Lee Mayberry, played for Arkansas, played in the NBA for a number of years, and coached by her dad. Her dad still coaches in the high school. Out there in Tulsa, as you see a foul underneath, and that's on Jackson. That'll be her second. So now Tiana Jackson forced to take a seat. And I'd be surprised if we see her for the remainder of the half. So you've got Nichols and Jackson, your two leading scorers on the bench now. And this is a great opportunity for BYU to try to pull ahead. They're down two, but try to get a lead and sustain that. Well, and Whiting knows that Jackson just went to the bench, so BYU with the call from the bench, they go right to the rack, and Whiting scores to tie it at 15. Jackson is such a difference maker at 6-6. And even if she doesn't block the shot, she's going to alter the shot, yes. and it really forces opponents to overthink when they get in there. Holly Kurskeeter with an aggressive move of her own, and she'll go to the free throw line for two. That foul going on Lauren Gustin for BYU, just her first. So Gustin with 11 points, five rebounds, and the first personal that Christian just pointed out. 7.49 to play in the second quarter. First free throw is up and good from Kurskeeter. Out of Sand Springs, Oklahoma. She's second in the Big 12 from the perimeter, just behind Kaylee Woolston two of the best three-point shooters in the conference. And Kaylee just 0 for 1 in this game. Chris Gitter missed the second free throw, but sometimes when you see at least the ball go through the hoop once, it'll open it up. But she hasn't had very many open looks. One for two on that free throw trip. Kansas with the one-point advantage at 16-15. Smiler away from the screen from Bubakar. Will bounce back to Rose. Little flip to Gustin inside. And another roll and down for Lauren Gustin. A beautiful job by Rose Bubakar to manufacture some offense on that possession in the half court. Does a really good job and just a little flick pass to Gustin. Papa Dipulu. Double team from BYU. Last touch by the Cougars after the initial miss. Watch Rose right here. She splits the defense as they both were drug over, worrying about her getting in there. And a heads up play. Oh. About that angle, that beautiful pass right there. Papa Dipulu receives. She'll hand off to Mayberry. And an offensive foul is called on Denai. Papa Dipulu, who first personal. And BYU with the basketball and now a one point lead. Well, not a lot of depth in the post for this Kansas team after Papa Dipulu. Jackson already with two, now Papadopoulou with one, and she is a big physical body in there that can go against Gustin, but cannot afford to pick up her second. 
Again, Tiana Jackson with two fouls has been sitting since more than eight minutes remained in the half. Rose Bubakar lost a dribble and to flip it out to Woolston and couldn't corral it. A turnover by the Cougars, their fifth of the game. As we take a look at Jackson, who is now, I'm sure, feeling very frustrated that she is watching. Get her team to a pretty good start here on the road and with the basketball down just one. You're not able to be effective when you're on the bench. So now it's going to fall into the hands of Mayberry, Franklin, Chris Skeeter out there on the court. Franklin loves that between the legs move. So good off the bounce, and she has still not missed a shot. Four for four, nine points to lead the Jayhawks. Outstanding. In their last meeting, she was one for eight from the floor. And so she has come in ready to go, focused, wanting to have a much bigger game. Gustin, quick first step to Bubakar. And Rose Bubakar. She now joins the club of friendly bounces on that little floater in the post. Well, Rose has started the last five games for BYU. Coach Whiting made the change up to put Calvert on the bench, bring her off the bench, keep her out of foul trouble more, but you can really see the chemistry with Gustin and Bubakar as they flow in and out of the paint and really read each other well. Woolston transition three. Misses left side and rebound is grabbed by Kerskeeter who will advance the basketball, poked away by Smiler. Smiler asking for a touch from Kerskeeter, not gonna win that argument. Smiler, one of the top perimeter defenders in the Big 12. She has not allowed Holly Kerskeeter a shot in this game. So we see, boy, that was close. And she knows exactly what she has to do on a three-point threat. And here's the first look for Kerskeeter. Offensive rebound is grabbed by Papadopoulou. Gill, now Mayberry, having baseline. Around Whiting. Gill one on one with Bubakar. And a foul is called. I'm not sure if Bubakar caught her late in that shot motion, but that whistle was late. And the Jayhawks will go to the line for two. Yeah, it almost looked like Rose was straight up, but maybe she did on the way up or caught her wrist somehow. And take a look right here. Is Gill trying to make something happen? There's a little spin to create some separation and up and under. And there you see some of the hand wake. Well, we've seen worse go uncalled. Absolutely. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> but Gill will absolutely take that call and she promptly knocks down the first free throw to tie it up at 19. One more for Gill, that too is perfect. Skyler Gill, junior out of Wichita, Kansas, gives Kansas the lead back at 20 to 19. Smiler bounces to Gustin, spinning with the left hand. Kristen, she has gotten so much better turning over that right shoulder this season specifically. She really has, and, and sometimes she would travel. Last year, even the year before, her sophomore season, but she has perfected her footwork underneath, and she can go left or right shoulder very confidently. 15 points for Gustin, and Jackson remains on the bench for the Jayhawks, but really, Kansas stepping up as Gill scores again, and they take the lead back at one. So with Jackson on the bench, Kansas really they haven't missed much of a beat. Calvert is fouled. And we're going to take a break at the under five timeout. 4.15 specifically to play in the second quarter. The Jayhawks trying to win their fifth straight Big 12 game. BYU trying to extend their own three-game win streak. We're back with more on the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. local business you like. Kia, movement that inspires. Hey, it's me, your future you. You made bad money moves. So you work at 102. You're late. 
Don't make your future you hate you. Compare and find top financial products today. Nerd Wallet. Hey man, ever since you tried Zesty Hidden Valley Ranch, I feel like you've been a bigger fan of that than the closers. How could you say that? Ranch time. Hidden Valley Ranch. Only oh, serves my flavor. You know you need protein to fuel results, but it's not easy when you're drinking the same bland, chalky shake every day. Stop punishing yourself and get to GNC for the best protein in the game. Look at this epic selection. All the hottest brands, enhanced formulas, and flavors that'll keep you coming back for more. Scoop after scoop after scoop. So bust out of your protein rut and actually look forward to those shakes with unbeatable protein at unbeatable prices. Fill your fitness with protein at GNC. Yeah! At Papa John's, we start with better. Like our fresh, never frozen dough made from six simple ingredients. And our dough can save you dough. Get two or more Papa Pairing's favorites for just $6.99 each. Order now on the app from Papa John's. We get how uncertain the future is. We've come of age in a complex world, face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's going to happen next? We are because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. The rush to the playoffs. The biggest games. The biggest stage. The Stanley Cup Final returns on ABC and ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to the Marriott Center in Provo, Utah. This is Big 12 Women's Basketball. The Big 12 now on ESPN+, Plus and the Kansas Jayhawks on the road with a one-point lead, 22-21, 4-16, make it 4-15 to play before half. And look at these numbers from Lauren Gustin. 15 points on 7 of 9 shooting, 6 rebounds. Problem for BYU is... Not anybody else really is no. hitting anything. There's a three for 16 combined besides Gustin. Where's the support, right? Rose Bubakar has four. Amari Whiting has two. Wilson has really struggled to find any space. Credit to what Kansas is doing defensively on her because she had a career high 26 last meeting. But this is a great opportunity as we were just talking at the break for BYU to go on a run and try to build their lead going into half when you've got Jackson and Nichols, the two leading scorers for the Jayhawks on the bench in foul trouble but other players for this BYU team have to step up. Emma Calvert ties the game at 22 apiece with that first free throw. Jackson only played seven minutes. Well, we believe that's going to continue through the first half, but until this point has still only played seven minutes and it's a huge storyline. Calvert makes both, BYU back in front by one. The Cougars have made five of the last shot, or six rather, shots from the field. And you better believe that Nichols is gonna be ready to go in the second half. She's the leading scorer coming in and just two points as she's sitting in foul trouble as well. A stop for BYU right there as Gill is unable to connect. Davenport. Had the angle off the glass and no good. Last touch by Kansas, BYU basketball. 20 seconds on the shot clock with the reset there. 3.50 to play before halftime. BYU holding on to a slight advantage on the boards, plus five inside on the glass. And that was another key for Coach Whiting is to win the rebound battle. And Gustin tied up. Possession arrow points to Kansas on that tie-up. Quick hands from Franklin to get a hand on the ball and not foul her as she was trying to go up. She would have had a wide open layup had she not tied that ball up. Mayberry. Drives right at Smiler and is fouled with Calvert coming over to help out defensively. Calvert will pick up her first personal foul. A shooting foul, so two free throws for Mayberry. She's so quick, this first step. I mean, this is Smiler, the top perimeter on-ball defender for BYU, and you see right there is the contact as Calvert was trying to come over and help, but Mayberry is explosive. She's crafty, shifty with the ball. My vet Mayberry, senior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Has seven points after that free throw make, three of five from the field. 
And she'll have one more to give the Jayhawks again a lead here. And that two goes down 24-23 Kansas. And this is the advantage that this Kansas team has in that they have multiple scoring threats. And so you've got your two leading scorers on the bench, but Franklin and Mayberry and Kurskeeter out there on the court are very capable of putting up big double-figure numbers as you see a, a massive defensive play Sky from Gill. Skyler Gill's 5'11". Just took that ball right out of the air. Calvert's 6'3", 6'4". Just depending on which listing you want to look at, but the point is the size advantage Clearly in favor of Calvert and Kansas taking advantage. Kurskeeter gets to the hoop and the Jayhawks lead by three. Was that last touch by BYU? Yes, that'll be off of Lauren Davenport. So the Cougars trying to answer back quickly in transition and they give it back. Back to back stops defensively for the Jayhawks and it's fueling their offense. It allows them just a little bit more breath right on the offensive side of the ball. You get some energy, you get some intensity, some stops, momentum builders and then it fuels what you do on the offensive side of the ball. A great drive, last possession offensively by Kurskeeter to get to the rim. Here is Kurskeeter. Franklin, nine points, hasn't missed a shot. That's her first miss. Nope, wipe it away. She'll stay perfect in the field because she's fouled on that attempt. And will shoot two. Kansas looking to extend their lead right now at three with 2.30 to play before halftime. Well, 18 of their 26 points have come in the paint, and it's not from the bigs. It isn't from Jackson, and it isn't from Papadopoulou. It's the guards and their ability to take you off the bounce, going right at Calvert. They play fearless out there, and they are not afraid to go in there amongst the trees and create something at the rim. Calvert will have to sit with the two fouls. And Franklin, the first two misses of any sort she has are both surprisingly at the free throw line right there. So the Jayhawks unable to capitalize and their lead will stay at three. Wolston has Whiting. Whiting, tough move, doesn't get the roll on the win. Keel is playing some big minutes. Number 32 is she's reserve off the bench, but foul trouble is, has her playing extended minutes. On the handout, the ball is deflected. BYU with some numbers. Rose Bubakar has Smiler wide open for three. And we're tied at 26. And Coach Schneider for Kansas really upset with that giveaway right there. The live ball turnovers really hurt you. And as you can see right there, BYU pushing pace. They want to get a look in transition and find one of their sharpshooters in Kaylee Smiler for the three. Well, a big triple right there for BYU. Papa de Pulu. There's Franklin on the baseline. The floater is an air ball. Collected by Whiting as the shot clock buzzer went off. Woolston. Smiler with an extra pass inside to Gustin and Papa Dipulu with her second personal foul. That'll be the fifth team foul on Kansas, which puts BYU in the two shot free throw bonus for the remainder of the half. As you look at Bubakar off of that live ball turnover, find Smiler for the transition three. She does a really good job of getting in the dribble drive lane. So just pinching the gap and making sure that she can help out her teammate on the drive and then pushing in transition. Rose is very capable, so one through four out there on the court have guard-like skills that can push the ball when they get a rebound or when they get a turnover, as you saw right there. Well, what a first half for Lauren Gustin. She makes both of her free throws as well. She's got 17 points and eight rebounds. Ooh. BYU with a two-point lead. Incredibly efficient, seven for nine from the floor, and as you just mentioned, knocked both free throws down two for two. A reach in foul on Whiting, and that is the fifth team foul on BYU. And that will send Franklin back to the free throw line. So both teams in the double bonus for the remainder of the half. Whiting will come out for this last minute. That's her second personal. So with Calvert in foul trouble and Whiting both to a piece. And then on the other bench, you've already mentioned Nichols and Jackson, both with two fouls apiece as well, and Papadopoulou. Franklin knocks in the free throw this time. One more, and that two is good. 28 apiece, final minute of the second quarter. 
Davenport. And BYU immediately goes to Gustin. How about the footwork and score? Lauren Gustin, 19 first half points. Just phenomenal, her patience in there to read what the defense does. She got him to jump and then use that up and under to finish on the high in the class. Gill, no good, but an offensive rebound is grabbed by Cobbins back out to Franklin. Cobbins will now come out to set the pick. There's Kerskeeter working on Smiler. Ball poked away. Six seconds on the shot clock. Kerskeeter will force up a three that goes in. What a shot from Kerskeeter. Kansas in front by one. BYU with the likely final possession of the first half here. Wolston with four and three, and she's tied up. It will be BYU basketball. 2.7 seconds showing on the clock right now. This is unbelievable. Defense is swarming her. Smiler right in her face. The shot clock going down. She knew she needed to throw it up. Shooter's going to shoot, right, Spencer? <laughs> she is their best three-point shooter, but it was not a clean look. That's a clutch shot big time as they needed that going into the break. Now they need a stop right here, continue that momentum, which is 2.7 on the clock. Coach Schneider in Kansas with the one-point lead, 2.7 seconds to play before halftime. BYU, because of the possession arrow on that tie-up, will have an opportunity here to try and take a lead into the 15-minute break. Smiler to inbound from the sideline, lobs to Gustin, and she is fouled. One second to play. Lauren Gustin. I think everybody in the building knew it was going to go to Gustin, and that's probably the biggest frustration for Coach Snyder is that you have to be able to be aware where she's at, what they're running, to try to get her a look and get her to the free throw line. And great execution on that play. Gustin misses the first free throw. 42% free throw shooter entering today's game. Is now two for three from the charity stripe. The second is good. A 20-point first half for Lauren Gustin. And Mayberry heaves it as the halftime buzzer sounds. 31 all in Provo. The Kansas Jayhawks and their four-game win streak colliding with BYU in their three-game win streak. Gustin scoring 64% of the offense in this first half. She's going to need more support in the second, but BYU able to tie it up. Amber Whiting, the BYU head coach, is with our side then reporter Brett Ham. Coach Lauren Gustin has 20 of your 31 total points. How important is you is it to you to get the ball into some of your other scorers? We're just trying to exploit the mismatches. And when they had to go small, that was really nice for her to be able to have that inside. And she's taking this one personal. She really wants this one. How do you up the pace and get some more runs going in the second half? Uh, we just got to keep pushing, but we got to get stops to be able to push the ball. Good luck in the second half, Coach. And not surprisingly, Amber Whiting, defensive-minded coach, is where her laurels rest. And that's where the message certainly will be in the halftime locker room that BYU needs to get stops if they want to play at the pace that the Cougars really, really benefit from. A credit to Kansas for having an answer for Lauren Gustin's superlative first half. All tied up, 31 all. This is the Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. It's Kansas and BYU women's basketball in a Saturday matinee showdown. uncertain the future is. We've come of age in a complex world, face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's going to happen next? We are. Because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more 
because we have an appointment with destiny. There's nothing better than a Subway Series footlong, except when you add an all-new footlong sidekick, like the $2 footlong churro covered in cinnamon sugar deliciousness, or the $3 footlong pretzel, salted and baked to perfection, honey mustard shot, and let's not forget the $5 gooey footlong chocolate chip cookie. What's your favorite, Clay? You're my favorite sidekick. No, you're my favorite sidekick. We'll get back to him later. Every epic footlong deserves a perfect sidekick. Next season on Fansville by Dr. Pepper. What's happening, Sheriff? It's a transfer portal. It's out of control. We're losing our defense. No, not our starting quarterback. We need him. Ugh. You can't leave. Our offense revolves around you. Give me your other hand. That's what Dr. Pepper is. It's OK. I understand. You can't let go of your Dr. Pepper. Absolutely not. Quarterbacks are replaceable. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. I always like your love songs. Bob, the world isn't ready for your music. I don't want the world to change. Sometimes the messenger to become the message. Halftime at the Marriott Center. This is Big 12 Women's Basketball on ESPN Plus. Kansas and BYU deadlocked at 31 apiece. Alongside Kristen Kozlowski, I'm Spencer Linton. Brett Hammer is our sideline reporter. And we saw just some dynamite first half performances on both sides. One from an expected source. But the other, maybe a little bit of a surprise. Zakaya Franklin with 11 points, Kristen, on four of five shooting. And she really helped kind of soothe things once Kansas got into some foul trouble with their two leading scorers on the bench. Yeah, she was able to take over and get where she wanted to off the dribble drive. So she got to her spots. Not a ton of resistance, honestly. She's really crafty with the ball, really good at moving away from the ball. Hit a big three, but on four or five shooting, very efficient for Coach Schneider. And as I mentioned, the expected source, Lauren Gustin. She's a double-double queen, 20 points and eight rebounds. She almost hit that double-double mark in the first half. Her career high is 30 points in a game. She's pacing for that today. Yeah, this is her ninth game of the season where she scored 20 or more points. She scored about 64.5% of the offense in the first half for this BYU team. She was on a mission, as Coach Whiting said. Didn't have her best game when these two teams met back on January 31st but she has come ready to play and she is a force inside for BYU. She played all 20 minutes, did not see the bench at all. So 20 minutes, 20 points on eight of 10 shooting and those eight rebounds. We'll be back with more at halftime as we look at some stats and analysis and scores around the conference. Stay with us. We're working on a BYU engineering outreach project. In Ecuador, they have prosthetic clinics, but it's really expensive. We wanted to create a process where they could make their own prosthetics. It was incredibly motivating for our entire team to know that this would go to people not able to provide for prosthetic. BYU has changed my life by giving me an education that brings me closer to God. The things that we're learning can so directly help others and improve the world. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Okay, we may have gone a little BBQ crazy at Sonic, but when you've stacked smoked pulled pork and tangy cherry wood smoke sauce on a cheeseburger, sandwich, and tachos, you'd be crazy not to go crazy. Pulled pork barbecue, now at Sonic. Say hello to future you. You made some bad money moves. So no vacations for you. Never got a credit card with rewards. No way we'll never see your fjords. All these places will never go. Here isn't us in Mexico. Don't make your future you hate you. Start making smarter financial decisions today. NerdWallet. Finance smarter. 
You know you need protein to fuel results, but it's not easy when you're drinking the same bland, chalky shake every day. Stop punishing yourself and get to GNC for the best protein in the game. Look at this epic selection. All the hottest brands, enhanced formulas, and flavors that'll keep you coming back for more. Scoop after scoop after scoop. So bust out of your protein rut and actually look forward to those shakes with unbeatable protein at unbeatable prices. Fill your fitness with protein at GNC. Yeah! We get how uncertain the future is. We've come of age in a complex world, face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's going to happen next? We are, because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. Halftime at the Marriott Center, BYU in Kansas, 31 all. This is NCAA women's college basketball on the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. Another busy Saturday in the Big 12 as we look at some notable scores. Probably headlined by Texas in their 21-point victory over Iowa State at home. So the fifth-ranked Longhorns continue to roll and then Another marquee matchup, Chris. You look at West Virginia on their home floor. They hold off first place Oklahoma 70 to 66. Yeah, they give Oklahoma their third loss. So now that puts Texas and Oklahoma right there in that first place spot at the top of the standings. TCU beat Cincinnati by seven. Houston, an eight point winner, Oklahoma State. And Kansas State, again, they're just finding a way to win. It might be ugly, but they're finding a way to win games. Here are your first half stats. Both teams, 31 all, 44% field goal shooting by both squads as well. BYU with a slight advantage in the rebounding category, not surprising with Gustin there and Jackson on the bench with foul trouble for the Jayhawks. And points in the paint nearly deadlocked as well. Chris Wharton, do you see any significant separation well, anywhere? Well, that's why we're at 31-31 at half. I mean, it was neck and neck and kind of went back and forth. Uh, but the biggest difference I saw as you look at the stats is not on there. BYU had 10 assists on 12 field goals. That's the style of play that they play with. Kansas had three assists on their 11 field goals. They're more of a one-on-one. I'm gonna take you off the dribble. BYU moves the basketball. And both teams, I think, wanna see more of their players step up rather than just Franklin and just Gustin for the two respective spots. Well, Tiana Jackson will certainly have her presence felt in the second half. Only seven minutes of court time in the first half. Picked up those two fouls quickly. We certainly expect her to make a huge impact for the Jayhawks as they try and win a fifth straight game. They'll have to do it in Provo. Stay with us. Every minute count. Kia, movement that inspires. Did you know that only one in 10 Americans consume adequate amounts of fruits and vegetables? Getting all the necessary nutrients in a day can seem nearly impossible with your busy schedules. At AG, we believe in simplifying how you provide your body with the foundational nutrients it needs by filling nutritional gaps and promoting gut health with essential vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and superfoods. Health doesn't need to be complicated. Take advantage of a comprehensive solution with AG1. Ever since you tried Tangy Hidden Valley Ranch, we've been losing followers. Mm-hmm. Neto, people don't follow us to watch you eat ranch. Chant with me. Ranch. 
Hidden Valley Ranch. Only serious about flavor. At Papa John's, we start with better. Like our fresh, never frozen dough made from six simple ingredients. And our dough can save you dough. Get two or more Papa Pairing's favorites for just $6.99 each. Order now on the app from Papa John's. Yeah, you know you need protein to fuel results, but it's not easy when you're drinking the same bland, chalky shake every day. Stop punishing yourself and get to GNC for the best protein in the game. Look at this epic selection. All the hottest brands, enhanced formulas, and flavors that'll keep you coming back for more. Scoop after scoop after scoop. So bust out of your protein rut and actually look forward to those shakes with unbeatable protein at unbeatable prices. Fuel your fitness with protein at GNC. Yeah! Welcome back to our Saturday showcase of NCAA Women's Basketball. This is the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Kristen Kozlowski. 31 all at the half. Our sideline reporter Brett Hammer speaking with Coach Schneider on the Kansas side as he walked out of the halftime locker room. All right, Coach, how do you stop Lauren Gustin in the second half? I got to stay out of foul trouble. What's the main focus to win this game for your team? Uh, I think the battle of the paint. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Brandon Schneider, not one to mince words, but the message is still very clear. Okay? Uh, yeah, when you are in foul trouble, Lauren Gustin going to get going. Jackson will be back on the floor, and then, I mean, this, this is a team, Kristen, that feels like they are poised to make a nice run in the back half. Of course, they've won four straight, but Kansas is a scary team come tournament time. Real, and really, it does come down to that foul trouble because how much of a different game is it when Jackson's on the bench and their star freshman, Samaya Nichols, is on the bench. Nichols has not scored a point in this game. She comes averaging close to 15 points per game. I expect a different-looking Kansas team to come out in this second half. While we have a moment, we take a look at how things are lining up in the Big 12 as we stand right now. We showed you the notable scores around the league. Now, if the season ended today, here's how those tournament matchups would work. If you were in the bottom four, you play in the first round, and that would match TCU and Cincinnati, Houston and UCF, and then BYU in ninth place would take on Texas Tech, the team they beat in the Marriott Center earlier this season. Kansas would be the seventh seed taking on number 10 Oklahoma State. Wait, but look at the top four. I mean, I mean any one of those are scary teams. Yeah, good luck. No, so no matter where you're at, I mean, it, it's it's a grind. It Every team has the ability to get hot. One through 14 in this conference, there's a lot of parity. There's a lot of strength in the conference this season. Well, I know the Cougars have made it one of their season goals to assure that they do not finish where they were picked in the preseason conference standings, which was number 11. Again, Kansas was picked to finish fourth, and they are playing more like that team right now after a slower start. Let's check in once again with Brett Hammer. Spencer, this week the eyes of the sports world fixated on Caitlin Clark as she broke the women's all-time scoring record with a remarkable performance. But to get there, she passed college hoop legends Kelsey Plum, Brittany Griner, and others. Someone she's yet to pass is Kansas legend Lynette Woodard. She finished her Kansas career with 3,649 points, just 18 points shy of basketball legend Pete Maravich, who over averaged 44 points a game. In college, Lynette Woodard was a four-time All-American and in 1981 won the award for best player in the country. The reason she's not talked about in reference to Clark's record is because her career ended the year before the NCAA officially recognized women hoops in 1982. So with all the talk about Kaitlyn Clark being the all-time scoring record this week, Kansas fans and Kansas media wanted to make sure that Lynette Woodard also got her recognition. Well, that message is heard loud and clear now. And you have to wonder, like, why can't we just make the adjustment if we have things like that but you got to go with well it's official now and that happened before it was technically official but that's good stuff from Brett Hammer Kansas controls to open up the third quarter they go immediately thanks Jackson, Jackson and an inside out to Franklin who has had the hot hand and she knocks down the three Zakiya Franklin with a team high 14 points in Kansas with an early three-point lead here in the second half offensively beautiful job by Jackson as soon as the guard came in pinched in 
They had a nice in-out pass and a wide open look from Franklin Jackson, or excuse me, from Franklin. Defensive rebound collected by Kansas. Nichols, and that layup, she wanted some contact and a foul. It hit the underside of the hoop. And Nichols right back to work, back out to Franklin. Cycled to Mayberry, who thought for a moment about a three. Mayberry will weave her way through traffic. Kerskeeter with a three. It rolls off the rim, and Smiler with the rebound. BYU into the front court. Woolston. Off the screen from Bubakar. Terminates her dribble, now to Whiting. Back to Woolston, who will try and tie it up with a three. That's no good. Kaylee Woolston remains very quiet for BYU. A scoreless in the game, just 0 for 3. Mayberry, and a foul! For the athleticism to get all the way to the rim and split the defense as BYU, they had Whiting on her, but then Smiler coming in to help. And Smiler, that right arm, you can see, just kind of came down. If she had kept that up, maybe she makes her take a tough shot and miss the layup, but Mayberry does a really good job getting to the rim. Her and Franklin, two of the best I've seen in the Big 12 at breaking you down and getting wherever they want, all the way to their spots off the dribble drive. A six to nothing run by Kansas right out of the gate here in the third quarter. They lead 37-31. Gustin, 20 points in the first half. And thought Whiting was going to break out. Whiting moved the other direction and a turnover by BYU. That was fully created by Jackson. Yep. Because Gustin did not want to take that ball in the paint. She was overthinking, taking a shot, and then just rushed a pass to Whiting. That's how important Jackson is to be on the court for this team. Mayberry. Kurt Skeeter off the pick, right back to Mayberry. They have Jackson in the post, poked away by Gustin out of bounds. And the Jayhawks will inbound with 14 seconds on the shot clock. I need to correct myself, Kristen. I said Kansas was picked fourth in the preseason coaches poll. The Jayhawks were picked third. It was Kansas State who was picked, picked fourth. fourth. And Kansas picked behind Texas and Baylor in that third place spot. A big reason for that is uh, this handful of super seniors that you're seeing out there on the court and all the experience that they bring in and the star freshman who is one of the highest recruits to come in and Samaya Nichols into this program. And that's why Coach Snyder offered her as an eighth grader. He saw her potential early and he was all in wanting her to be a Kansas Jayhawk. Mayberry with 11 points. She and Franklin both in double figures. They have scored 25 of Kansas's 37 points. And Whiting with a steal on Franklin. Whiting is fouled on her way to the hoop. Kansas right now offensively in their half court set just looks out of sync. They're not on the same page. They're not moving with a good flow to the offense. A lot of standing, but BYU doing a much better job defensively at just creating havoc. And the quick hands from Whiting. I like the aggressive move in transition as well. The go up, she had the advantage. She kind of had that first step on Franklin and had to force that foul. Six turnovers for Kansas. BYU with nine. Whiting trying to take advantage of that steal and makes the first free throw. Amari Whiting with three points. It has been very quiet for most of BYU's usual scoring committee, other than Lauren Gustin, who has 20 of BYU's 32. Whiting going one for two after that miss there. And it's 37-32, Kansas maintains their five-point lead. The Jayhawks on the hunt for a fifth straight win. Bubakar with a steal. Across the timeline, spins around Mayberry, dribbles out of trouble, back to Smiler, pass inside, Gustin. Up and under, Jackson with her third personal foul. Wait, heads up, just touch pass, a quick pass right into Gustin from Smiler at the top of the key. It's about timing, especially as a big, when you are sealing your opponent, you only got three seconds in the key, so Gustin had Jackson sealed, and Smiler did a beautiful job with the timing of the pass. Didn't hold on to it, didn't get it sticky. Gustin draws the third foul now on Jackson. Jackson again with the foul trouble. 
She's only played about nine or 10 minutes of game time, got two fouls early in the first half and picks up her third early in the third quarter. Gustin makes the first free throw. Now she has 21 and a 42% free throw shooter is now four of six from the free throw line. Papadopoulou with the rebound off of that second charity stripe misfire. Franklin, Papadopoulou, able to set the screen on Mayberry and an offensive foul on Papadopoulou. That is her third personal. BYU did a really good job defensively at defending the pick and roll action on both wings and getting a good position. As you take a look at the foul trouble as Jackson just picked up her third. Nichols, Papadopoulou playing with two and then Whiting, Gustin, Calvert also with two for BYU. Again, so just moments ago, Papadopoulou now with three. Gustin, Papadopoulou can't afford to pick up a fourth, and so BYU attacking Kansas with their defensive star. Jackson again on the bench, and their reserve in her own foul trouble. Gustin with 23 points and a steal as Nichols lost it on her way to the hoop. Gustin is having herself a day, and she is playing at such an elite level. Both sides of the ball for BYU. Gustin gets it from Smiler. Stafford would score 25 points for Lauren Gustin. And we're tied at 37. They have no answer for her. But Jackson's on the bench in foul trouble, and she got the best of her on the last foul. Smiler with a clean swipe on Kerr Skeeter. Numbers. Smiler, open three in transition, no good. Rebound opposite side by Wollston. She's blocked on the way back up, but collects. Back to Smiler again. Bounce inside to Gustin. Out to Whiting. Whiting driving inside. Floater too strong, and Papadopoulou secures the rebound. Oh, big opportunity missed by BYU right there on a couple of occasions. And it was an excellent look from Whiting as the defense had completely shifted. You had an overload on the right side. She took the ball from the right wing to the left side. Boy, another moving screen. And that is her fourth foul. So Jackson is going to have to come back into the game with those three personal fouls because Papa Dipulu is one away from being disqualified for the remainder of the game. And there's still more than five minutes to play here in the third quarter. So how aggressive is BYU going at just an unbelievable defender in Tiana Jackson. Well, right now, this Jayhawks team is going to go into a zone. They, they've got to try and protect Jackson in foul trouble. So you see they're setting up their 2-3 zone, playing this to prevent getting any more fouls on Jackson. But the officials have been consistent in watching for that moving screen call. There's the high-low in that zone. And Gustin now with 27. BYU on an 8 to nothing run. They lead 39-37. A lot of momentum on BYU's side right now. Mayberry, oh, so tough. Why, well, bet Mayberry, 13 points, and she'll have a free throw after we take a timeout. 4.51 to play in the third quarter. A huge bucket and an and one opportunity, no less, for Kansas to slow down BYU's momentum. This is high level Big 12 women's basketball on ESPN+. Plus. When my grandfather started this company in 1947, he couldn't have envisioned what we would ultimately become. We realized that our value to our customers is that we will be there day after day, year after year, doing whatever we need to to find solutions to the challenges that they face. We are committed to be honestly better in all that we do, in every opportunity that we have to serve our customers. If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today.
The human eye is drawn to light. Can't help it. It just happens. How do you plead? For mercy. If you want to be inspired, you got to show up with the willingness to be inspired. And even when things don't go as planned, we can still have hope. Man, I'm so proud of you. I just knew that it was season ending. A shot at a goal! That's cool. This is our chance. It resonates through generations, past and future. It drives champions, toe to toe and arm in arm. When our chance signals victory, it shakes the foundation. It is the foundation. Together we climb its peaks and search its valleys. It fuels our ambitions. We wear it, fly it, raise it, claim it. This is our chant. What will you do when this is your chant? Lauren Gustin and BYU have stormed back on an 8-2 run in the last few minutes. Even this game at 39 apiece. The Jayhawks got a response and a much needed one from Wyvette Mayberry driving to the hoop, made the layup, and she'll have an and one free throw out of this under five media timeout to give Kansas a potential lead once again. And if Kansas, Kristen, is gonna win this game because of foul trouble, to Jackson and Papadopoulou. It feels like it's gonna be riding the coattails of two outstanding senior guards in Mayberry and Franklin. Yeah, they've been tremendous in this game and they've come ready to play and taking what the defense gives them. And that has been a lane to the basket almost every single time. Both very similar in their attack off the dribble as you see defensively. Now the Jayhawks continuing to play in a zone defense in an effort to protect Jackson and not allow her to pick up her fourth. An extended 1-3-1 one, one look there for a moment. Now back into a 2-3. Whiting lost it. And last touch by Kansas. Deflected out of bounds. 10 seconds on the shot clock. 4.38 to play here in the third quarter. Whiting to inbound. Has Gustin. Calvert cycled to Davenport. Now with four on the shot clock. Smiler. Little hesitation off the glass, around and down. My goodness, what a shot over Jackson. It was like a double pump in the air that Smiler had to do to avoid the 6-6 length of Jackson inside. And a foul inside. Calvert battling for position with Jackson. That goes on Calvert. Let's check it with Brett Hammer, who was Hanging out in the BYU timeout, what did you find out, Brett? Well, if you thought there was any way that they were going to change the game plan, you would be wrong. Uh, Coach Whiting told her team, we are going to continue to push this zone, get a lot of shots off the weak side, and continue to attack Jackson down low, just like Smiler right there. Well, Smiler got the roll, and that's an added bonus because it's really been Lauren Gustin and it's been tough going been after that. All Lauren Gustin, 27 points, just three shy of her career high. Now she's got another double-double. That's her 81st of her career, 81 double-doubles on the season. And Gustin, 11 of 13 in this game. She's been very efficient. The rest of BYU, five for 23. She has not had the help she's needed offensively, and Gustin single-handedly keeping them in the game. 27 points, 10 rebounds for Gustin. BYU as a team has attempted 10 threes and only made two. Lauren Gustin has made one of those threes, and it's her only three-point make off season. Their second leading scorer, a true freshman, and Kaylee Woolston and helped scoreless in this game. 0 for 4, but in this zone, that's where you want to find her. Here is Woolston. Back rim no good this time for three. The Cougars now two for 11 from beyond the arc. First Geeter lost it on her way to the hoop. And off of her knee and out of bounds. Turnover by Kansas. And back to BYU, where the turnover woes have really come to the surface for Kansas here in the third quarter. And coming in, they're the second best team in the conference at taking care of the basketball. Average just under 14 giveaways a game, and they're just four off of that in the game. Calvert, ball poked away. 
collapsing defense in the zone with the quick hands and Kansas with the takeaway and that's BYU's 10th turnover. So both teams with an even 10 giveaways. BYU with the slightest of leads now 41 to 40. Franklin injured her shoulder. She's holding on to that short shoulder. That's why they stopped play to get her out of the game and not a great sign for Kansas with how well she's played and how well Mayberry. Both those players, 14 points in the game to lead the Jayhawks. No, we hope to see Zakiya Franklin right back in this game. 14 points, five of six from the field. A couple of rebounds, and again, she's just been such an instrumental part of Kansas really maintaining right with BYU in spite of all of the foul trouble by the post play from the Jayhawks. Nichols. And Nichols still held scoreless. A lot of credit to Rose Bubakar who was given that defensive assignment in this game. Able to use her length against the freshman. Mayberry. Nice little start and stop move. Jackson there making an impact on the offensive glass. Kerskeeter. Flips it up off the glass, and again, she beats the shot clock. Apparently, for Kerskeeter, she just needs the shot clock yeah. to be winding down, and then she'll make a dramatic shot. Just under four seconds. That's her preference, <laughs> right? Every player wants to play under that type of pressure. Hey, I love the shot-making ability in the crunch. Davenport for three. That one rims off. The Cougars' three-point shooting woes continue now two for 12. And it's dribbled off the foot of Nichols and out of bounds. Turnover number 11 by the Jayhawks. Five here in the third quarter alone. You see her attack when that extended pressure came from Woolston. Kerskeeter does a really good job of putting it on the floor and trying to make something out of nothing. Big time shot. 42-41 Kansas in front. Gustin, skip pass to Davenport. Jump stop. That one rims off, offensive rebound, Gustin off the glass and good. And Jackson, you can see very aware, trying to keep those arms up, but she can't contest the way that she usually does aggressively with the three fouls. Yeah, she has to stay vertical, stay straight up, just as she did there. Even if Gustin makes it, you still need to be on the court. Know your importance. Nichols short on the long jumper and the long offensive rebound falls back to the Jayhawks. Mayberry, so good off the bounce once again. Why well, bet Mayberry trying to will her team to a road win and keep the win streak alive. She's got 16 points to lead all Jayhawks scores. Well, she just continues to play fearless and her scoring partner now out with that injury. We do not know if she will return, but Mayberry put this team on her back offensively. There's a block shot by Jackson. Denying Woolston, Mayberry in transition. Right at the retreating BYU defense who are collectively on their heels. And Kansas leads by three, Mayberry with 18. She has been absolutely incredible in this game with her energy, her intensity, and her willingness to score when the team has really had a hard time with points to come by. Lauren Gustin. Has only missed two shots. That's the third missed shot. 12 of 15 after that misfire. 29 points. She's one point shy of tying her career high. And we're not even to the fourth quarter just yet. Mayberry with the shot clock off. Here's from Coach Schneider. The hold for the final shot. Taking Whiting one on one off the bounce. Offensive rebound. Jackson put back is no good. Bubakar has the rebound, and Whiting from three-quarters court will heave up a shot that's not close and will go to the fourth quarter with Kansas leading by three. We were tied at 31 and a half. The Jayhawks with a three-point advantage going to the final 10 minutes of play. Kansas and Wybet Mayberry. 10 minutes away from what they hope is a fifth straight win. BYU trying to win their fourth straight overall behind Lauren Gustin.
Count on value, confidence, and savings with certified pre-owned Hondas. Pay a fraction of the new Honda price and get all the features and benefits you love from a new Honda. Plus, extra value with a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty and first-year oil changes on us. Count on confidence, knowing your certified pre-owned Honda has a 182-point inspection and comes with 24-7 roadside assistance. Count on certified pre-owned Hondas. Search your local Honda dealer today. We get how uncertain the future is. We've come of age in a complex world, face to face with problems we didn't create. So what's going to happen next? We are, because our future is the future. So we're going to build bridges and hospitals in a day and feed those left in the cold. We're going to do all this and more because we have an appointment with destiny. Hey man, ever since you tried Zesty Hidden Valley Ranch, I feel like you've been a bigger fan of that than the closers. How could you say that? Ranch time. Hidden Valley Ranch. Only to the flavor. Come on in to the Chuck Stop. Everything you need for a road trip to the Final Four. I'm impressed, Chuck. You're gonna need these. And these mud flaps. I can use these. I'm earning double miles with my Capital One Venture card, so it's on me. Well, what up with you and these subs? Man's gotta eat. At Papa John's, we start with better. Like our fresh, never frozen dough made from six simple ingredients. And our dough can save you dough. Get two or more Papa Pairing's favorites for just $6.99 each. Order now on the app from Papa John's. Bob, I think this could be very special. Ooh, yeah. Everyone is raving. Bob Marley, One Love is exhilarating and a masterpiece. It's the perfect movie at the perfect time. Good. Bob Marley, One Love. Yeah, you know you need protein to fuel results, but it's not easy when you're drinking the same bland, chalky shake every day. Stop punishing yourself and get to GNC for the best protein in the game. Look at this epic selection. All the hottest brands, enhanced formulas, and flavors that'll keep you coming back for more. Scoop after scoop after scoop. So bust out of your protein rut and actually look forward to those shakes with unbeatable protein at unbeatable prices. Fuel your fitness with protein at GNC. Yeah! Kansas with a three-point lead as we enter the fourth quarter of this Big 12 Women's Basketball Showdown. On a Saturday at the Marriott Center, why that Mayberry a 10-point third quarter. She's got 18 to lead all Jayhawk scores on seven of 12 shooting. She's getting wherever she wants, largely off the dribble, Kristen. Little resistance when she is getting to the rim and just using angles to score. Does a really good job pushing in transition after they forced the turnover. And she has exploded, especially in that third quarter frame, to just take over the offense. She lost her counterpart, Franklin, out with that injury. She was holding onto her shoulder. No word on whether she'll return. And Wilson, a good look from the angle right. That is probably where she's most confident shooting the three-pointer, but it doesn't go down. So Kaylee Wilson had 26 points in the first meeting against Kansas. She's got has, zero. Has not scored. 0 for 7. And an offensive foul will wipe away the bucket from Mayberry, who was about to have 20 points on the game, but no basket and another offensive foul called on an illegal screen. And that was on Jackson, her fourth, and Coach Snyder just cannot believe it. Knowing it's her fourth, he's gonna go with Papadopoulou, who also has four. You see right there, she's getting tangled up. She was trying to roll to the basket. Well, the whistles have been quick on picks it today is so for sure. so difficult as a coach you're navigating so much trying to get your team in the right sets offensively defensively the scheme take away you know the advantages of the other team and now he's dealing with this juggle match with the foul trouble that he's had to the entire game and yet the jayhawks remain in front by three papadopoulou hook shot won't go rebounded by bubakar jackson again on the bench and Papa Dipula with four fouls inside. Yeah, don't be surprised if BYU go to Gustin, which they do right here. Spinning out of trouble. Whiting cycles to Woolston. Bubakar. And Whiting again straight away. Flips to Gustin. Has a shot block. Put back. And fouled on the way up. Just a matter of who that foul call will go against. Is it Nichols or is it Papa Dipula? It's actually Mayberry. They well, went it's with Mayberry, Mayberry digging down to help out. So Mayberry picks up 
Just her first personal foul. That's beneficial for Kansas. Whiting does a really good job of splitting the gap in the zone defense and just going right through the middle of it, right through the teeth of the zone. And then everybody's scrambling at that point defensively. Everybody's trying to rotate and stop the ball. And in that, they lost Gustin on the right block. But as soon as she caught it, they collapsed on her. There was three on her, and they blocked the initial shot, but then fouled her as she was going up a second time. Augustin, four of seven from the free throw line, 42% on the season coming in, makes one of two. She has tied her career high in scoring now. She's got an even 30. 12 rebounds as well, and pulls BYU within two at 46-44. And look who's back in the game. It's Franklin. Uh, I think the shoulder's right just work. fine, just fine. She's got 16. My goodness, it has been Mayberry and Franklin for Kansas and the Gustin show for BYU. Gustin not even looking for the ball. Calvert collected, missed the bunny at the rim. Oh, a huge miss for BYU and Kansas looking to run. Kerr Skeeter fakes the three around Wollston, skip pass. Nichols wide open and she gets her first points of the game at a critical juncture. Seven point Kansas lead. Big time ball movement as they whip that ball around. The defense scrambling to match up. An uncontested look from the freshman. Well, five point swing right there as Calvert missed a wide open layup. She'll try and make up for it for three there. And that's long. Gustin tracks down the offensive rebound to Whiting. Will bounce inside. Gustin, reverse layup is good. 32 points. That is a new career high for Lauren Gustin. She's got 32. On 13 of 17, she's only missed four shots in this game. Extremely efficient to go along with those 13 rebounds. Her 25th double-double of the season. Franklin. A little long on the floater. Offensive rebound on the putback. Zakaya Franklin with 18 points. So Franklin and Mayberry both with 18. And that will easily keep a team feeling good. Well, foul trouble or not, the Jayhawks are finding a way in Pro Bowl thus far. 7.06 to play. They lead by seven. Every minute count. Kia, movement that inspires. No fees or minimums and no overdraft fees are another reason banking with Capital One is an even easier decision than this. I'll take Barkley. Yes! Yep, even easier than that. What's in your wallet? Hey man, ever since you tried Zesty Hidden Valley Ranch, I feel like you've been a bigger fan of that than the closers. How could you say that? Ranch time. Hidden Valley Ranch. Only Series by Flavor. There's nothing better than a Subway Series footlong, except when you add an all-new footlong sidekick, like the $2 footlong churro covered in cinnamon sugar deliciousness, or the $3 footlong pretzel, salted and baked to perfection. Honey mustard shot. And let's not forget the $5 gooey footlong chocolate chip cookie. What's your favorite, Clay? You're my favorite sidekick. No, you're my favorite sidekick. We'll get back to him later. Every epic footlong deserves a perfect sidekick. Next season on Fansville by Dr. Pepper. What's happening, Sheriff? It's a transfer portal. It's out of control. We're losing our defense. No, not our starting quarterback. We need him. You can't leave. Our offense revolves around you. Give me your other hand. That's my Dr. Pepper hand. It's OK, I understand. You can't let go of your Dr. Pepper. Absolutely not. Quarterbacks are replaceable. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Our generation isn't turning away from the world's problems. Watch us fly ahead, rise to every challenge, and overcome anything. Watch us become the next greatest generation.
Well, a career day in every sense of the phrase for Lauren Gustin. 32 points, 13 rebounds, surpassing her previous high of 30 points scored in a game. She's done that twice. And she's found the groove against Kansas today, but the Jayhawks have had an answer in the form of two guards. So as good as Gustin has been, Kristen, and she's been everywhere, Yvette Mayberry and Zakaya Franklin have combined for 36, 18 apiece. They've offset what Lauren Gustin has done for the Cougars. It's been Gustin against Mayberry and Franklin. That's really the highlight of the game and what it's come down to and who can score more. Every offensive set in their half court set and both teams have really had to mix it up defensively to protect some players who are in foul trouble, but a big shot out of the break from Smiler. That's exactly what BYU needs to cut into this lead is they've got to have other players step up, take some of that offensive pressure off of Gustin, and get stops. Defensively, it is crucial to get a stop. Kerskeeter got the three. And you know what? Holly Kerskeeter with the clutch shot she has hit with the shot clock winding down. Not the case right there, but still a massive three. Jayhawks now 5 of 11 from three. Smiler trying to answer right back. That's in and out. And the rebound falls into the hands of Nichols. It is an eight-point Kansas lead. Kansas now 5 for 11 from distance. Foul is called, and that goes on the rebound against Papadopoulou. And that's going to be her fifth. That's going to send her out of the game. So Papadopoulou disqualified with five fouls. So you got 6.14 remaining, 6.12 on the clock, rather. And Coach Snyder doesn't want to quite risk bringing Jackson in. Jackson with four fouls on the bench right now. So he's going to go small. Cobbins will come in. And the zone has worked effectively for Kansas since he went to that. Whiting. Calvert. Whiting again. It looks like the Cougars are just all kind of a little gun shy because of the shooting woes aside from Lauren Gustin. Offensive rebound off her own miss. Back out to Davenport for three. No good. Calvert with an offensive rebound and she scores it back with the left hand. And that's where the size advantage for BYU can help as we push later in this game with Papa DePulu fouled out and Jackson on the bench with four. There's no size for the Jayhawks. 12 offensive rebounds now for BYU in this game. It was a different story back on January 31st where the Jayhawks had 17 offensive rebounds, but a big time play and a new career high for Franklin, 20 she points. Surpasses her previous career best of 18 and Gustin is fouled inside by Cobbins. Well, that's not the worst case scenario for Kansas sending again. Lauren Gustin to the free throw line. And you're sending a 42% free throw shooter to the line. Now she's been a little more efficient in this one. Five for eight at the charity stripe in this game. But BYU, they, there's no way they're going to chip into this if they can't get stops on the other end and figure out how to stay in front of the ball when Franklin or Mayberry have that basketball in their hands. They just have had no answer for those two dynamite Kansas guards. Gustin misses the first. Second free throw is good. Now six of 10 today from the charity stripe. Gustin has 33 points. BYU down by seven. Just over five to play in the game. Mayberry again picked up by Whiting. And Franklin will be guarded by Davenport. Mayberry for three, right corner. That one rims off. Looked good from our perspective, just a little too long. Now she comes in about 29% from distance. A decent three-point shooter, but couldn't get it in. That is a massive three-point make from Lauren Davenport. The Cougars, before that one goes down, were combined two for 16, now three of 17. More importantly for the Cougars, it pulls them within four. Mayberry, Gustin helping out defensively off the dribble. Franklin, right at Davenport, wants to go to that left hand, and that... If you want to get Franklin out of rhythm, you cannot let her go force to her, her strong right. hand. You have to force her right, and BYU has not been able to do that. Franklin's career day continues. It's at 22 points. Kansas with the lead back out to six. 60 to 54, 422 to play, and the Jayhawks trying to win their fifth straight overall. People want to define Gen Z, but that's our job. I wait tables. 
But last week, I built a field hospital. I put out a forest fire. I stopped a thousand attackers. And a natural disaster. I've saved lives. And led a team on patrol. I serve. While I go to school full time. While I work full time. The greater the challenge, the stronger we become. Hey man, ever since you tried Zesty Hidden Valley Ranch, I feel like you've been a bigger fan of that than the closers. How could you say that? Ranch time. Hidden Valley Ranch. Only serves my flavor. I bought three of the same jacket to get the fourth free. I subscribed to get a deal on these memory supplements, then forgot to cancel. Yeah, well, you know, recognizing a bad deal is a part of the journey. Yes, Eva, would you like to share your breakthrough? I got AT&T's best deal on the new Samsung Galaxy S24 Plus and got to choose my plan. Oh. Yes, we don't make you sign up for the top tier plan to get our best deal. I still haven't gone. I subscribed to get yeah, a deal. Yeah, we know. Get the newest Galaxy on us with any of our best plans, guaranteed. At Morgan Stanley, old school hard work meets bold new thinking to help you see untapped possibilities and relentlessly work with you to make them real. Next season on Fansville by Dr. Pepper. What's happening, Sheriff? It's a transfer portal. It's out of control. We're losing our defense. No, not our starting quarterback. We need him. You can't leave. Our offense revolves around you. Give me your other hand. That's what Dr. Pepper is. It's okay. I understand. You can't let go of your Dr. Pepper. Absolutely not. Quarterbacks are replaceable. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. At Papa John's, we start with better. Like our fresh, never frozen dough made from six simple ingredients. And our dough can save you dough. Get two or more Papa Pairing's favorites for just $6.99 each. Order now on the app from Papa John's. Exclusive articles and tools. Top leagues and tournaments. Best stories in sports on ESPN Plus. Four twenty-two to play in the game. Kansas leading BYU sixty to fifty-four. The Jayhawks have won four consecutive Big Twelve games. This would be a huge road win for Coach Snyder and his team, especially leading into a road game at 21st-ranked Baylor on Tuesday. So tough to win in Waco. And things don't really get easier after that. Kansas State follows in the Sunflower State showdown between the Jayhawks and the Wildcats. BYU hosting TCU on Wednesday. TCU victorious today. And then BYU with a tough road trip to Iowa State, followed by their home finale in Big 12 regular season play against Houston. Still a long way to go here. With four plus, BYU trailing by six. Lauren Davenport just hit a massive three for BYU, but the Cougars just three for 17 beyond the arc. Here's Whiting back out to Calvert, long two. Emma Calvert scores. Good movement in that zone. Calvert is the one flashing high post, and she struggled a little bit to hold on to the ball at times in there, but a good relocation when Whiting put the ball on the floor, got in the mid range, and was able to kick it to her. Skip pass, Kerskeeter for three. Got it again. The one player you don't want to leave open on the three-point line is Kerskeeter. As she comes in second in the league, three-point field goal percent behind Woolston. When the gym is silent with Kansas back out in front by seven. Gustin. Long two rims out. She's been so good, so it's hard to argue with her feeling confident. And but she's hit those shots early. She hit those long two. Two footers early for BYU. Great defense from Gustin. Nichols, where she saw one go down when she hit a big three just a few minutes ago, and she gets the bounce this time. So Nichols started 0 for 4. She's now 2 of 6, 5 fourth quarter points. And Kansas has needed all of them. They lead by 9. This is the large lead of the game for the Jayhawks. Pass deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with BYU. It is danger zone in the worst way for BYU on their home floor. The Jayhawks zeroing in on another Big 12 win. They desperately need to score on this possession right now. Shot clock's down to 17. 
Whiting to the free throw line and Boy, she got hit in hammered. the face, throws it right to the Jayhawks. Kerskeeter has her shot blocked by the retreating Wollston. The whistles have been swallowed at this point. Gustin, shot blocked by Jackson. Calvert gets it right back, goes right at Jackson and gets the roll. 2.20 to play in the game. Kansas still in front by seven. Mari Whiting might have a little blood on her eye and as she looked over at her mom, her mom said, head coach Amber Whiting said, you gotta keep going, we gotta keep playing. And Brandon Schneider really upset that there was no foul call on the breakaway layup attempt from Kerskeeter. Evens out as there was no foul call on the other end where Amari Whiting took a lot of contact. That led to that live ball fast break. Kerskeeter is fouled. And Kansas will go to the free throw line, 151 to play. Now the scoreboard in the stadium showing 67-58. Our official score sheet shows 65-58 as Kerskeeter misses the first free throw. I believe it's a seven point game. It should be. I think that on your screen you're seeing incorrectly. And Kerskeeter misses Kerskeeter miss both. She is a 76% free throw shooter. A lucky break for BYU. And fans at the Marriott Center are all screaming to fix the scoreboard. Calvert, guarded by Jackson, goes glass and good. It's a five-point game. Timeout to Amber Whiting and BYU, a 30-second timeout. Still showing 67-58. It should be 65-60. BYU has made five of their last seven shots from the field. The officials and some of the fans in the building trying to correct the scoreboard as you're seeing 67-58, but you mentioned, Spencer, it should be 65-60. Now, there is an automated element here with the score that you are seeing, it is connected directly to the scoreboard in the Marriott Center. So while we would love to fix it for you on the graphic, it is directly tied and out of our control. Need that uh, telestrator where I can just exit out right, right at <laughs> 65, might be helpful. Just <laughs> X that scribble out, out. go ahead and scribble in the right score. If you're a BYU fan, you really want that blacked out right now so it can be a seven point game versus a nine point game. Makes a big difference, a minute and a half to go. I'll do you one better, 65-60, a five point differential right there. After the hoop from Emma Calvert. Calvert, by the way, into double figures, she's got 10 points, has scored four quick ones. Lauren Gustin leading all scorers with 33 points, 16 rebounds. And on the Kansas side, it's been Franklin and Mayberry. The guard line have combined for 40. Franklin's got a career best 22. Kerskeeter's got 14. And now the officials clearly having a lengthy conversation well, the, to try and figure out what the heck is going BYU on. The entire BYU staff, while it is a timeout right now, they are so concerned about this score, as they should be. As Amber Whiting's trying to focus with the five out on the court, the rest of the staff is just going a little bit berserk because the score is off. And it matters at this point in the game. It matters at any point in the game, but a minute and a half to go should be a five-point game. Well, now they've corrected it to 67-60. BYU fans and staff and players and everybody in the building still asking for it to be pushed to 65. Now, I'm not sure if it felt like when Kerskeeter got on that breakaway after the steal from Whiting that the two points were awarded there when she had her shot blocked by yes. Woolston. And that's yes. when the two went up. And you've got staff on Kansas now going back through their replays, looking through to identify what it should be and make sure if it does get corrected that it wasn't corrected wrong. And so the officials have come all the way behind the media table to the back media table to talk to the play-by-play. -play. Just to reset, 132 to play. We believe it should be a five point Kansas lead. It was nine just a few moments ago. It's been moved to seven. Emma Calvert just scored for BYU to get the Cougars 260 points. 
And the unfortunate part about all of this, Kristen, is it just is so devastating uh, it's hard for to these the players. flow of the game. And, and especially BYU, you're on your home court. You gain some momentum on a big shot from Emma Calvert. And then your own scores people messing up the score and having a hard time keeping track of that. That's brutal. No way around it. Not to put fault on any one person, but this is a critical, critical mistake. Under review is the score. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen this, Spencer, to this extent where they have to go back so far and, and look at where it was messed up. That's exactly what all of the sports information people on both sides are doing and working in a group effort to try and isolate the issue and confirm where the extra two points got added for Kansas. And, and at this point, you're you're undoing a web because you got to go back. I think you have to go back at least a minute and a half. I think it goes back to like you said, where Amari Whiting took some contact, there was a no call. It led to a fast break with Kerskeeter that took some contact. There was a no call, but she did not score, and points may have gone on the board at that point in the game. Well, I don't know what it is about these two teams meeting up, Kristen. <laughs> it's bizarre, right? But in Lawrence, it was a bat delaying the game for at least five minutes. Yes, a bat. They could not catch the bat. It flew into the rafters after it swooped around the court and around the Jayhawks specifically at Fog Allen Fieldhouse and then eventually flew up into the rafters. I still think the bat's probably in the building. Uh oh, <laughs> it wouldn't last that long, would it, man? Because they, they never did catch it. I did they, didn't, talk, they didn't catch it. I did talk to SID Doug Self for Kansas, and uh, he confirmed that they called somebody in, but never did find it. So here, watch right here as Emma so Calvert, Calvert makes scores. it. Did they get the two points to Kansas? Let's see if that changes the score They at do all. get they the two did. points to Kansas, and then they gave two to BYU. Okay, there it is. So they gave two points to both teams. You just got to remove the two from Kansas. It should be a five-point Jayhawks lead. And Coach Brandon Schneider is upset at this, but unfortunately, it should be corrected to 65-60. I'm sure he's doing his due diligence, which he should, just to make sure his team's not getting robbed of a potential bucket here. But we just showed you the moment that when Calvert scored, both teams were awarded two points. And it wasn't like there was a significant layover. It wasn't like they were late giving Kansas a bucket. And then Calvert scored immediately thereafter. But they are going to check all of them. They're going to go back and make sure that Kansas's last field goal was added correctly before Calvert scored for BYU to bring the Cougars at that juncture to 58 points. There is such a delay at this point in the game, and you gotta finish a minute and a half. As players, it's so hard to come through out of this, to have some energy, some intensity, get refocused. Now the officials we can see on our stat monitor, they are going back through stat play-by-play -play on stat broadcast and just trying to figure out And the score has finally, after a several minute delay, been adjusted and confirmed. Kansas with a 65-60 advantage. After review, the score is 65 to 60. A great job by the officials to try to navigate, honestly, a mess to get through that and make sure that we have an accurate score as they talk it over with both head coaches. Okay, so Brandon Schneider and Amber Whiting receiving the final explanation. That's a smile of frustration from Coach Schneider for sure.
But again, as long as the score is correct, <laughs> no matter how frustrated both coaches are on both sides. So now I'm very interested to see in all that time what both coaches have come up with in their chess match. BYU yes. is going full court pressure to try to obviously make them rush. May not, they may not foul at this point with a minute and a half to go, but they are going to try to take some time off the shot clock and force Kansas into a quicker look. They did put Smiler on Franklin. Franklin with the career high 22 points. And here is Nichols with five fourth quarter points. They have been massive. Guarded by Gustin. 110 to play. Shot clock now at seven. Nichols. And she gets all the way to the hoop. Battle for the rebound. Falls to Kerskeeter. Now BYU going to be forced to foul most likely. No. Yes, Amber Whiting is asking Lauren Gustin to foul Mayberry, and she does. Boy, a big time offensive rebound by Kurskeeter. She's been critical in the second half. Has come through knocking down big shots, getting to the free throw line, but none bigger than that offensive rebound. It resets the shot clock to the 20, and then BYU had to foul. The Cougars need to foul again. They're going to have to foul quickly. Mayberry will receive the inbound and is fouled again. So three team fouls by BYU. Two more to go before the Jayhawks will be in the double bonus. Well, Mayberry is a career 75% free throw shooter, shooting 73% this season. If you're BYU, you want to foul, ja foul Jackson, but they're not going to get her the ball in this situation. Kansas is going to get it into the hands of their better free throw shooters. Gustin just picked up her fourth foul. She immediately flashed that four to her bench. And so the Cougars are going to have to go with somebody else, understandably, to leave Gustin on the floor. And they put Heather Hampson back into the game who will replace Gustin. Davenport will replace Amari Whiting, who also has four fouls. Dylan foul! Dylan foul! Rose Bubakar has one foul, and she's pretty athletic out there. I almost would use her athleticism to get to the ball and foul. Kaylee Smiler picks up her second personal. BYU will have one more team foul to put the Jayhawks in the double shot bonus for the remainder of the game. Correction, that will be the fifth foul. Scoreboard a little slow to get that fifth foul up there. So it is not for that. It is number five. And now Zakiah Franklin looking to add to her career best. 22 points. Makes the first free throw. She's got 23, three of five from the free throw line. Steps up with confidence. Not rattled at all. I've been so impressed with her poise and composure throughout the course of the game. Calmly makes both. Seven point lead. Now it's 67 60 for Kansas. There you go. Only took a 10 minute delay or whatever we did. BYU. And Smiler. Shot blocked by Jackson. Her presence felt late in this game. It hasn't played much. Only 20 minutes because she's been in foul trouble, but she got a smile on her face after swatting that shot. Watch a smiler, does a really good job getting in there, but I think a little dish pass inside to Gustin right there. She's on the block and just wrap it around Jackson. It's deceiving how long she is at six foot six and when she's extended with that arm. We have another issue at the scores table. This one, a question about how the foul was not rather how the foul, but who the foul was charged to. They're looking at timeouts as well. Boy, this has uh, been an adventure. For bizarre sure. ending, right? Maybe just about as bizarre as that bad, as you mentioned. <laughs> for Skeeter. Listen, Franklin and Mayberry, they deserve a ton of credit. Kerskater has been the X factor for the Jayhawks. Especially in the second half, because 
Smiley did an outstanding job in the first half as she said she hit a couple clutch shots, shot clock going down and got herself going really, just kept moving away from the basketball and creating offense by her movement. 69-60. Kansas barring what would be an epic meltdown, which does not feel likely here, is gonna win their fifth straight game, go to eight and six in Big 12 play. Kansas just came in with more balance as we talked about the guard play and how offensively balanced they are with the three-point shooting of Kurskeeter and then you've got the dribble drive attack with Mayberry and Franklin for BYU. It really has just been all Gustin until late where you had Calvert finally get into double figures. So two players for BYU in double figures. But Calvert and Gustin, your two bigs, they've combined for 43 of the 60 points in this game. Three-point shooting, an issue for BYU as well today. Just three of 17 as a team on your home floor. Never an ideal number. You want to certainly be above 30% when you're playing on your home court. And it was Kansas, 6 of 14 from the three-point line. How many big threes did we see go down in the fourth quarter alone? One from Nichols, a couple from Kerskeeter. Three more made three-pointers for the Jayhawks, and therein lies in a way, the nine point difference that we're seeing on the screen right now. On the defensive end, I thought they did a really good job when they had to protect some players in foul trouble, they went to the zone, the two, three zone, and were still disruptive enough defensively. And Whiting is fouled by Mayberry at the hoop. Mari Whiting will shoot two, just three points for BYU's freshman point guard today. Six assists, however, for Whiting. Four rebounds and only two turnovers. Yeah, BYU as a team, just 11 giveaways in this game. They've done a really good job taking care of the basketball. But this isn't a Kansas team that's going to be up in your face forcing turnovers. They force just about 15 per game and don't, don't extend pressure too much other than in the half court and right around the perimeter. Whiting's first free throw is good. She'll have one more, just two for five in the free throw line today for Amari Whiting. Second also good. So back to a seven point Kansas lead. And another timeout is called. 30 second timeout from Kansas to address how they want to handle the imminent full court press that will be coming from BYU. Well, and with this timeout, they should be able to advance that ball and get it to half court, which will take some of that pressure off. But BYU is going to have to foul quick once more and be strategic in who they foul and who's on the court. I imagine that Coach Whiting is going to put Gustin and Whiting on the bench just for this defensive set really quick so that she does not pick up their fifth fouls. And as you see, they are on the bench. And Ubacar, Calvert, Davenport, Smiler, and Wilson will be on the court. On well, that point by you, Kristen, that, that is one of those unique rules in women's college basketball when you call a timeout you immediately advance it give your team the option to throw it into the backcourt now watch the to. setup here look at how they're set up along the entire court with staggered all four of them and then cutting to the ball and they get mayberry calvert commits the foul 27 seconds to play BYU trying to manage the clock, foul quickly, put him on the line. And at this point, you can't be choosy. Whoever catches the ball, you have to foul them. You can't play the percentages at this point unless you can deny players like Mayberry or Chris Geeter, who are better free throw shooters, from catching the ball. First free throw up and good from Mayberry. This to give her 20. And that one rims off. So she'll stay at 19, rebounded by Calvert. Timeout BYU. Well, BYU game. can get a quick look on the outside and knock it down. That would make it a, a two possession game and you're able to continue to stay close enough. And if you're Kansas, you don't want to give up a three at all or foul on a, any kind of shot to stop the clock. Well, the chess match continues between 
Coach Schneider and Coach Whiting. Now, if Kansas hangs on here, and statistically speaking, they should. They get to eight and six in Big 12 play. That game against Baylor that is upcoming for the Jayhawks now takes on some added significance because you win that, and I know it's really difficult to win in Waco. Now you got a chance to dip inside that top six, maybe get as high as fifth place in league with the way you are rolling. And they are playing well. And you know, if Jackson's not in foul trouble, they may have had a much bigger lead in this game with what she does with her presence out there on the court, but really starting to come together at a crucial point. And, and it goes back to that game back on January 31st that started this four game win streak coming into this game. This is a team that last year went 25 and 11. They won the WNIT. Oh, Jackson swats Gustin under 20. Smiler, catch and shoot three. That's long. Jackson battling with Gustin. Offensive rebound, saved in, but right to Franklin. And Wolston will poke that basketball away from Franklin, but Kansas is going to win this game. Wolston ops dribbled the clock out. Final score in Provo, Kansas 70, BYU 62. The Jayhawks sweep both games against the Cougars this season. And move to 15 and 10 overall, eight and six in Big 12 play. They've won five straight games overall. BYU has their three game win streak in conference come to an end. Cougars dropped to 15 and 12 and are now five and nine in the Big 12. Kansas has really made strides in the right direction. And they had three and double figures in this game. This is only their second Big 12 game away from home that they have won and secured against a BYU team that was thriving and on the up and up. And that was a tough situation to come in and win, but they've won their fifth straight, carrying some momentum going into that game next week. The Jayhawks did it in large part without their 6-6 dominant force, Tiana Jackson in the middle. Sat much of the game, but it was Franklin and Mayberry who combined for 43 points on the guard line. They combined with 16 from Kurt Geeter and Kansas comes up with a big win. Let's talk with Zakaya Franklin. She's with Brett Hammer after a career high 24 points. Zakaya, you shot nine for 11. You missed two shots. Did you know that? And how were you feeling with that hot hand throughout this game? Uh, I didn't know that. And I was just being aggressive. Uh, my coaches, my teammates, they kept telling me to be aggressive, get in the lane, create for myself and create for others. So that's all I was trying to do. It was, seemed like it was a lot of dribble drive to this left side of the rim for you tonight. What is your role on this team? Uh, just to be aggressive, be a veteran leader, uh, insert myself, you know, when needed. So that's pretty much it, so yeah. This is the sixth game in a row that you've now won in the Big 12. It's hard to get wins in the Big 12. What is rolling so well for this team? I just think we're clicking on all cylinders right now. We, we have more things we can work on, uh, but right now we're just gelling together at the right time, so I would just say that. What do you want to work on as you head to Baylor next week? Uh, we got a couple things we could clean up and learn from this game. So honestly, after we watch the film session, uh, we'll have a lot to talk about. But honestly, right now, we'll just enjoy this win. So thanks, Zakaya. Nice game. Thank you. Zakaya Franklin dialed in. You can see the calmness, the poise that she has about this game and want to celebrate the wins, but she's on to the next knowing, hey, we're, we're not where we want to be. We have to keep improving. But I was so impressed with her ability to manufacture offense. It came down to guard play for Kansas in this one, and they got it done. Once again, the final score from Provo, Kansas 70, BYU 62, a career day for multiple players at the Marriott Center, but it's the Jayhawks who extend their win streak to five and end the Cougars at three. For Kristen Kozlowski, Brett Hammer, and every member of our outstanding crew, I'm Spencer Linton saying goodbye from Provo. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus and the Big 12 Now. We'll see you next time. Every minute count. Kia, movement that inspires.
Come on in to the Chuck Stop. Everything you need for a road trip to the Final Four. I'm impressed, Chuck. Gonna need these. Pumpkin spike latte and these mud flaps. I can use these. Jen. Hey, guys. Mm, lucky socks. Wonder what Jim Nance smells like. I smell divine. I'm earning double miles with my Capital One Venture card, so it's on me. Well, what up with you and these subs? Man's gotta eat. <laughs> hey, man, ever since you tried Zesty Hidden Valley Ranch, I feel like you've been a bigger fan of that than the closers. How could you say that? Ranch time. Hidden Valley Ranch. Only serves by flavor. Our generation isn't turning away from the world's problems. Watch us fly ahead, rise to every challenge, and overcome anything. Watch us become the next greatest generation. There's nothing better than a Subway Series footlong, except when you add an all-new footlong sidekick, like the $2 footlong churro covered in cinnamon sugar deliciousness, or the $3 footlong pretzel salted and baked to perfection, honey mustard shot, and let's not forget the $5 gooey footlong chocolate chip cookie. What's your favorite, Clay? You're my favorite sidekick. No, you're my favorite sidekick. We'll get back to him later. Every epic footlong deserves a perfect sidekick.